guys, Craig from Fix It Fellows here, and today I am dealing with the giant ant for mountain bike. Um, I went out on it the other day, you know, generally it gets ridden off road, but there was a little bit of time when I was having to ride it along a road, and it wasn't until I was on that nice smooth asphalt surface, I noticed like the back end was like a bucking bronco, it's boom, boom, boom. So I suspect I've got, you know, buckled or deformed rear wheel, so we're going to take a look, see whether it's just the tyres deformed or whether it's the rim has gone or you know something that I can do, something maybe I can straighten with a few turns of, of the spokes, fingers crossed. So let's have a look. Okay so I've flipped the bike over and uh, this is just a nice quick way of checking. I have put a, a screwdriver across the, the rear end like that so I can sort of gauge uh, where the tyre is in relation to a fixed point and here we go if we spin the wheel you can see that that wheel is not round now I don't know whether it's the tyre or the rim as well but one half of the wheel one half the rotation it's brushing on that on that um, screwdriver, and then it drops away what almost eight mil, and that was really really noticeable riding it along a smooth surface. So I think what I should best do is do the exact same test, but with the tire off, um, and test that screwdriver against the edge of the rim and see whether the rim is doing the same thing right okay so the tire is off of the rim obviously to do that i had to take the wheel out of the back the back forks out of the back of the frame and whilst doing that it become apparent that let me take the skewer out of there on this giant anthem same as on giant giant trances uh, and many other giant full sus bikes which share this similar geometry um, because this is a fairly um, early model this is a 2015 I think it still come with a uh, a nine millimeter quick release skewer but it's a little bit different from usual um, because the frame is actually designed to have a 142 12 millimeter through axle and what they do is they have bolt-in adapters here and here depending on whether you're running a 9mm QR or a through axle but what I'm finding is is so this side which is the non-drive side is let's how we say let's get a bit of a close-up there we go it's, there's a one one insert on the inside of the frame held in place by let me see there we are where is it let me get it focused in there a Phillips headed screw so that one screw holds this insert into the frame and as you can see there's been a bit of play in there and a bit of wear and then on this side, which is the drive side, it's a two-piece insert. So you have the inside of the frame is the hanger. And then on the outside of the frame is effectively a nut through which your 9mm skewer goes. Now this hanger is held in place by one very small, I think it might be a 3M3 hex headed um, screw and it's a very small hex head so it's about what, about 2 mil. so you can't get much purchase on it before you risk rounding the head off now as a consequence this hanger maybe doesn't get put in there as tight as it should be and as you can see look there's some play on that now when you think you attach your mech to that and then all of the energy and torque that gets transferred through your crank, through your chain is all exerted onto this point here which is effectively a lever 
and look there's a bit of play in it and I think what's happening is that bit of play has lead, led to a bit of wear and ultimately I don't think the back wheel was sitting in there square and true um, to the extent that when I took the wheel out and I just tried to put the skewer through on its own I couldn't get the threads to meet up with the threads on this bolt on this side because this had moved to the extent it was out of line. Hence, the axle wasn't running square to the bike. Hence, the amount of movement I was getting there, I believe. So anyway, these you can replace, and I'm going to replace them. Question is... Is, is the wheel still any good if it's not and I've got to replace it then I'll invest in a, a wheel with through axle and I'll get the through axle inserts if the wheel's still good then obviously I'll stick with me nine um, nine mil QR and just replace these with nine mil QRs but look, you can see it's see the play in that now what I'm hoping is that it's this that's worn and not the, what do you call it, the indentation in the frame. Anyway, time will tell. Okay, so I've stuck a screwdriver across the frame as before. The tyre, the wheel's back in the frame without the tyre. Um, I've set those axle adapters inside the frame as square and as true as I can make them. So. As far as I know, this wheel should spin square and true. And let's see whether we're getting the same range of movements as before. So let's spin the wheel up. And look, there's, there's nowhere near, nowhere near the same amount of movement. I mean, at one point we was getting an under eight mil discrepancy. Now what movement you can see is due to, um, here on the front, on on the rim, looks like this rim has hit something hard and has pinched the rim together. That can be straightened out. But you know that's pretty true. That will. I mean, I'm not going to worry about start mucking around with the later uh, the spokes for that. Okay, I'm going to pull out that rim. That's easy enough to do. Just need an adjustable wrench and just pull the. There it is, there's the pinch point there. So let's get me adjustable wrench like this. Adjust it so it's tight and then just pull it out a bit, straighten it up. Yeah. yeah, and then on the other side. Much better. So if we spin that now. There really isn't much wrong with that rim. So I think what I best do is get the tyre back on, get that seated on the rim nicely, and see whether it was all due the axle adapters here and here let's have a look okay right so the tires back on the rim rims in the bike let's spin that wheel up and let's put the screwdriver across and look at that we're still getting the same range of movements so I think what I'll do Take that tire off, swap it for another one, see what happens. Okay, so a replacement tire is on that back wheel. Let's spin her up and straight away you can see that that is not dipping anywhere near as much 
anywhere near as much so after all of that I'm thinking that tire is either deformed or doesn't actually work on that rim properly and then lo and behold I'll take a look at the front wheel spin that up and look at that using that spade against the door as a reference point look how much that wheel that tire is bouncing so they're both mountain kings this is a mountain king 2.3 what does that symbol above mean i'm not sure is that a plug 2.5 god knows now apparently these are 2.4s but they aren't as wide there's no way they're as wide um but that that is much better and i guess that front tire is going to go as well so after all of that it looks like it's a simple tire replacement job um, just out of you know good housekeeping i'm going to replace those uh, axle inserts i've had a look you can get them for 18 quid off of ebay um, don't want any further damage there so get them done she's going to be good to go for a bit longer Bish, bash bosh received that's have arrived which is just as well because when you look at this drive chain that derailleur is sitting so skew with that chain is having to run at a funny old angle and when you get in and actually have a look at when you get in and actually have a look there at the hanger it's not sitting just look i mean look at the play in that yes once the wheel's in and the skewer is eventually through with a little bit of fuss it does sort of put it in place but that's that's really not great is it i suspect that hanger's maybe got a little bit out of line as well so let's get the new hangers on this is who i got it from there you go i'd recommend these people they seem to do hangers for just about everything so you can go direct to their shop or find them on ebay okay so let's get this old dropper out you can see that it's it's loose in there so let's get that out it's a um do, 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 what is that two mil two mil allen key in there you can feel that the screw is actually bent you can feel it and the head is almost gone all right let's get that out So obviously look, I've detached the derailleur first of all from there. Come on, screw out you can. Okay, there we go. Let's have a look at those side by side, shall we? Okay, so here we have the, the old hanger here, and this is the new hanger. So this is looking from the, these are for the drive side, this is looking from the outside of the frame. So this bit here is on the outside of the frame and this larger section goes on the inside of the frame. And these two pieces are secured with this bolt that passes through to here. And as you can see, it's the only bit that secures the two together. Hence, unless it's in the frame, it moves like that. Whereas on the new one, you have now got some extended bit of metal here on both halves of the hanger with an additional screw here passing through from the outside locking both together like so so from the back side you see that on the old one and from the back side 
you see that on the new one like so so hopefully this additional screw here will create some more stability so let's find out okay so this is the hanger on the non-drive side it's secured by a screw on the outside of the frame there a new one came with my kit so I shall change that one as well so it's just a case of undoing this screw here and installing the new one as you can see these are just a like for like replacement nothing different on this one okay so there you can see there's the new style hanger on the drive side with the extra mounting points that's so much more secure you can just you can feel that's just integrated kind of into the frame much better and then on the non-drive side it was just a light for light change out so um, nothing really exciting on that side um, let's drop the wheel back in and, and see what happens okay so i've just dropped the wheel back in there i haven't put the skewer back in yet but straight away you can see that derailleur is running much straighter the chain isn't having to do any crazy contortions and hopefully when i put the skewer in the threaded end should engage with the threaded side of this part nice and easily not like it was before so there we go let's push it in yep and it is engaging straight away so that gives you much more confidence that that wheel is sitting nice and square inside there let's just give it a little crank over it's running sweet let's uh, just put that there let's pan out a bit shall we let's just go through the gear changes Go all the way through all the gear range, no problem at all. So that's now running nice, the, you don't get the wheel bounce anymore, and likewise on that front tyre that I've changed, you can see the gap between the tyre and the the, the brace across the stanchions there there's no bounce there either right there you go guys the giant anthem is back in action the dropouts have been replaced um different tires have been put on the bike i'm no longer getting that kangaroo in effect so touch wood um it will be problem free for a little bit longer um, and until next time i shall say thank you remember to watch some of my other videos if you get the chance uh, subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell to receive notifications for my latest videos so thank you very much